Hello, welcome to the Cloud Developer Certification Preparation Series. In this video, we're going to look at enhancing cloud applications using messaging services. After completing this unit, you should understand messaging use cases, benefits, and available APIs in the Message Hub service in IBM Bluemix, Message Hub messaging models, the work offload pattern using Message Hub to make an application more responsive, and finally, some MQLite API quality of service features. The MQLite API is one of the APIs available to developers utilizing the Message Hub service in Bluemix. So let's look at some terminology used in messaging. So first, what is messaging? This is a technology that allows high-speed asynchronous program-to-program -program communication with reliable delivery. Programs utilizing messaging communicate by sending packets of data called messages to each other. As you can see in the diagram at the bottom right, the way messaging works is that a sender, producer, or publisher which is a program that sends a message, will write a message to a cure a topic, and then a receiver, consumer, or subscriber, which describes a program that receives a message, actually receives that message. There are two basic messaging models. One is called publish-subscribe, another is called point-to-point. -point. The publish-subscribe model of messaging utilizes a channel called a topic. So the producers of the message will write messages to a topic, and then the receivers, consumers, or subscribers of that topic will actually receive those messages. Publish-subscribe is a very efficient way to send a single message to multiple recipients at the same time. The other messaging model is called point-to-point. -point. And in point-to-point, -point, the sender of the message utilizes a channel called a queue. And the receiver of the message will query the queue in order to receive that message. Now let's take a look at the evolution of application architectures as we move out of the data center and into the cloud. In the traditional data center architecture, we typically had large monolithic applications written using homogeneous technologies that were tested, deployed, and operated as a whole. As we evolve to a cloud-centric architecture, what we're seeing is a very different picture. The application front ends would connect to a series of microservices. Each service would be controlled by a small DevOps team. The services themselves would be tested, deployed, monitored, and operated individually. They would be written with polyglot languages and persistence mechanisms, and each service could be scaled on its own as needed. These services will typically have REST interfaces or be accessible via lightweight asynchronous messaging. Now let's talk about the IBM Message Hub service and IBM Bluemix. Message Hub is a scalable distributed high throughput message bus that allows you to unite both your on-premise and off-premise cloud applications. Message Hub allows you to do several things including wiring microservices together by using open protocols, connecting streaming data to analytics to realize powerful insights, and feeding event data to multiple applications so that they can react in real time. The Message Hub service is based on Apache Kafka, which is a fast, reliable, and durable real-time messaging engine. Like other Bluemix services, Message Hub is charged on a pay-as-you-go model, so any charges you incur for utilizing the service will be based on your actual usage of the service. 
Message Hub offers developers three APIs. The first is the Kafka Java API. So this is a Java API that allows you to access Message Hub. And the reasons you might want to use the Kafka Java API is because it's because it offers very low latency and high throughput, especially when compared to the Kafka REST API. And it is a much richer API than the REST API. So it's much more tightly integrated with the overall Kafka architecture. It allows you to do many low-level type operations. The next API supported is the Kafka REST API. This is a RESTful interface to Message Hub. And some reason why you might want to use the Kafka REST API is if a developer wanted to get started quickly using the Message Hub service, and in certain cases where latency and throughput are not primary considerations. And finally, there's the MQLite API. This is an AMQP-based messaging API for Java, Node.js, Python, and Ruby message hub clients. And some of the reasons why you might want to use the MQLite API is that it provides a higher level of abstraction than any of the Kafka APIs. It supports the use of hierarchies and wildcards in topic structure, and we'll talk more about that in an upcoming slide. And last but not least, it includes some additional support for fault tolerance and quality of service. And we'll also talk about these in an upcoming slide. Now let's look at some use cases for Message Hub. The first use case we'll look at is the worker offload pattern. So this is appropriate when you have intensive work as part of a user interaction that can be offloaded and then distributed among worker processes to be performed asynchronously. Examples of this would include processing images or videos or performing text analytics. The next use case to look at is the event-driven use case. In this scenario, Applications need to take one or more actions when something interesting happens. So for example, applications can be notified to email logs and update dashboards when a build is finished, or to upload videos after finishing transcoding. Another use case is the idea of delayed processing. So you may want to schedule a task to happen at a specific time. So for example, running detailed reports when app use is low or generating an end of day summary. There is also the third party integration use case, which can ensure that applications will remain responsive even if a third party system is either unavailable or is not responding fast enough. Examples of this include updating existing CRM system or booking an appointment which requires an interaction with a third party system. Now let's look at message hub messaging models. So first let's look at sending messages. In both the MQLite API and the Kafka API, you send messages indicating where the message is to be sent, utilizing, in the case of MQLite, the destination name, and that destination can either be a queue or a topic, or in the case of Kafka, regardless of the queuing model, whether it's point-to-point -point or pub-sub, you always send to a topic. Now let's look at a simple receive. In the case of the MQLite API, we indicate the destination, which again can be a queue or a topic. And the receiver application simply points to the appropriate destination to receive the messages. In the case of Kafka, again, regardless of whether you're using a queuing or pub sub model, you always use topics. And the consumer application will simply point to the topic in order to receive the messages. Before we look at any more messaging models, let's take a slight detour and talk about multi-level topics and wildcards in the MQLite API. Again, this is unique to MQLite API and not available in any of the Kafka APIs. So when you're using the PubSub model, you can specify topics in a hierarchy much like a directory tree 
And here's an example drilling down from the USA to the state of Texas to a couple different cities in the state of Texas. Now, subscribers to a topic can utilize wildcards instead of the actual topic names to subscribe to multiple topics. There are two wildcards. One, one type of wildcard is a multi-level wildcard, which is a hash or a pound, and that matches zero or more levels. So in the example we have, USA slash pound will match all four topics shown above because the pound matches zero or more levels. Similarly, USA slash Texas slash pound will match the last three. The other wildcard is the single level wildcard, which matches one and only one topic level. So USA slash plus will match USA slash Texas only, and USA slash Texas plus will match both Austin and Houston. Now let's look at the PubSub or Publish Subscribe messaging model. We'll start with the MQLite API. As we discussed earlier, receiver applications using the MQLite API can use wildcards instead of actual topic hierarchy names to specify the topics they wish to receive messages sent to. In this case, in our example here, we can see client2 uses test slash hash in order to match the only topic being used, which is test slash A. In the Kafka API, the actual topic names are used and there is no concept of a hierarchy or any wildcard characters. So in this case, we have two clients that are both receiving the messages sent to the topic test A by using the actual topic name, which is test A. The next model we'll look at is sharing, and we'll start with the MQLite API. In sharing, multiple clients consume messages from the same place, but each message is only delivered to a single client. So in this example here, we have two messages delivered, one with hello and one with world, and we have two clients. One client gets the hello message and another client gets the world message. In order to implement sharing, both clients have to indicate the same share name in the API calls they use to receive messages. In the Kafka API, the sharing model can be implemented also. In this case, each consumer application will indicate the same consumer group name in the API call they use to receive messages. Let's look at the work offload pattern using Message Hub. The work offload allows you to improve your responsiveness by offloading long-running tasks from the application's main event loop. So as you can see on the left, in this example, the application is doing all the work it needs to do in order to handle a request, and the response time is fairly slow. On the right, the long-running portion is offloaded to a worker process. And as you can see, the response time has improved. Let's wrap up by talking about some MQLite API specifics around fault tolerance and quality of service. So let's look at time to live first. There are two types of time to live, destination based and message based. Time to live is specified. And if the messages stored at the destinations are not retrieved within that time period, at the end of that time period, the entire destination is destroyed and no new messages can be stored at that destination. When the time to live is message based, the message will be deleted once the time to live has expired and no clients have consumed the message. As far as message delivery is concerned, there are two options. One is called at most once and one is called at least once. So at most once just means the message is delivered only once. So this is appropriate when occasional loss of data caused by communication disruption is okay. And then there's at least once delivery. This is required when there can be no loss of data. However, it does have the possibility to result in duplicate messages. So the programs consuming these messages have to be smart enough to recognize that.